Great. So yeah, thank you, Kim and Jill Marie for the introductions. My name is Max Cook. I'm a PhD student under Dr. Jennifer Balch in the Department of Geography um, and the CU Earth Lab. Um, this presentation, I'm actually gonna be presenting uh, on some work that's being led by Bill Higuera, who is um, a research scientist and associate professor at University of Montana, and who's also been a visiting fellow at um, CU in Ceres and the Earth Lab this year. So this research really um, kind of dovetails nicely on what we've just seen in both the video and Kim's introductory presentation. Um, and it's really asking these two primary questions. How do human causes and impacts of wildfire vary across the West? And how have human causes and impacts of wildfire varied over the 21st century? So really over the last two decades is what we're gonna be looking at here. And I will say too that this research is in progress. So this isn't necessarily a complete representation of the work that's being done, but um, it is in progress and I'm happy to answer more questions after the presentation as well. So I'm gonna jump right through this slide because Kim also had this up. But what we know is wildfires are increasing. Area burned by wildfire has um, increased since the mid 1980s and fire seasons are becoming longer. Some other aspects of this in terms of overarching causes are also land use policy limiting fire use, um, which have really increased fuels and uh, where fire was historically frequent. And then another aspect, which is what we're really gonna try to talk about here today is um, humans have expanded the fire niche. They start, have started the most destructive fires and are increasingly living in fire prone landscapes. So when we think about fire regimes, um, this work really aims at trying to integrate human dimensions into fire regimes. Humans are fundamental components of fire regimes, um, both because of the impacts and because of the causes, the ignitions of fire. Um, human impacts put fire at the forefront of science management and policy discussions. Um, and we're, we all feel the impacts, whether you've been personally or directly impacted by fire or indirectly impacted through smoke-filled air. Um, for instance, this image on the right showing um, 2020 fires um, and the smoke that covered the Western United States. So a fire regime, when we think about a fire regime, it really summarizes the characteristic patterns, causes, and impacts of fire over broad spatial and temporal scales. So the fire regime concept is really foundational to fire ecology um, and fire management. And we like to think about fire regimes in, this, in terms of severity. So low severity, mixed severity, or high severity. Um, and this is generalizing the concept a little bit, but for our purposes, um, we'll stick to that. So what if we were to think about fire as a social ecological fire regime? So we have our fire attributes, such as ignition source, size, frequency, seasonality, and duration. But then we have our human impacts, which can act as our fire severity, right? So structure loss, management costs, and personnel. So in this research, we're really trying to think about fire regimes under this social ecological framework. To introduce the data that we're looking at for this work, um, this data is called the ICS 209 plus. It's been produced here in the Earth Lab by Lee St. Dennis. Um, it's a distilled and clean database of incident command reports that outline a bunch of information about the incident response to fires. So we're really interested in looking at the variability in space across Western US states and the variability in time um, in the last two decades, 1999 to 2020. From the ICS 209, we can get things, um, information about fire activity, fire impacts, um, and that includes the number of structures destroyed, the cost of incident command, and the personnel committed to fires. I'm not gonna to touch on the climate piece in this presentation because it's still in progress in this work, but I'm happy to talk about that during the discussion period. We also looked at the built environment through the lens of the historic data, or historic settlement data compilation of the United States, states which is HISDAC US. Um, and this is based on a Zillow ZTrax database of property records. Um, and again, I can talk more about that offline. Some of the derived information that we've um, retrieved is burn rate, so hectares per kilometer squared, exposure rate, so the number of structures or properties per hectare burned, and the loss rate, the number of destroyed structures per hectare burned. 
Within the built environment, we're also looking at um, properties within flammable lands. So you can see the structures and burnable vegetation. And uh, what we've done there is taken the burn probability layer developed from the US Forest Service and identified areas that are potentially flammable and then calculated how many people may be living in those areas. So some of the attributes of social ecological fire regimes from the fire event perspective, we can look at fire size and area burned. And these figures that we're gonna look at here are depicting the differences between human caused ignitions or non lightning caused ignitions and lightning caused ignitions. So what we see here is that lightning ignited fires burn more area, 61% of the total, but the median fire size doesn't differ. In terms of seasonality, lightning start more fires um, and light, the lightning driven fire season is shorter and peaks later. And then fire duration, we see that lightning ignited fires burn longer um, with a median duration of four times non-lightning ignited fires. In terms of structure loss, however, we see a, a pretty different story. So 88% of all structure loss occurs during non-lightning ignited fires. So you can think of these, again, I'm using lightning and non-lightning, but it's um, you know, human and non-human caused fires. Non-lightning fires are 11 times more destructive than lightning ignited fires on average across this time period. Instant command costs, we don't see much of a difference, but we do see that um, non-lightning ignited fires cost about two times more on average. And then peak personnel is about the same story. We see that there's a little more personnel assigned to non-lightning fires. So this fits with the video that we just saw. Um, this is, you know, structural loss in wildfires is a story of extremes. And what we're seeing here is a log log plot of um, structures destroyed by wildfire with the 90th percentile or the 99th percentile here showing that most of the home destruction has occurred in a small number of fires. And just to put some context to the video that we saw, we can see that the Marshall Fire in Colorado in December was very extreme or above that 99.9 percentile um, in, in the top 15 most destructive fires in the United States. So what are some of the main correlates or predictors of bad fires um, from a structure loss perspective? So again, that fire severity being structure loss. Um, and can this information or can this inform how we support good fire while minimizing bad fire? What we see when we look at um, this data across time, so this, these plots are showing data across years, the two decades. So the, per, the blue dots here are representing 1999 to 2009. The red dots are representing 2010 to 2020. And what we see here is that there's um, annual area burned from non-lightning sources explains 68% of annual structural loss. When we compare this to lightning ignited area burned, um, this just explains 22% of annual structure loss. So non-lightning sources explains much of the variability. What we see also um, in looking across space, so this plot, rather than looking at the two decades, is looking at the 11 Western US states. Um, the more structures in burnable or flammable vegetation, the more structures destroyed by fire. And this may seem intuitive. Um, but structure abundance alone explains 70% of the state level variability in total structure loss. However, it's not just exposure to wildfires. Um, structure abundance is also strongly correlated with non-lightning caused fires across the West. So here we're looking at area burned and structure exposure. So on the left, we can see that non-lightning um, caused fires explain much of the variability um, in area burned, whereas we do not see that same relationship with lightning caused fires. So what are the, some, of the, some of the key drivers of these bad fires? Human caused area burn accounts for 88% of structure loss um, and structure abundance explains 70% of variability in structure loss. We also see that lightning caused fires are not a key driver of bad fire. And so I'm gonna skip through some of these fairly quick here. So kind of moving into some of this second piece, how have human cause and impacts of wildfire varied over the last 21st century? We see that area burned as we saw has been increasing. Um, and so we can see that 
lightning caused area burn is decreasing while non lightning caused fire is increasing. Structure destroyed has drastically increased. We see a 247% increase in structures destroyed um, across this time period. And then the structure loss rate has also just been uh, increasing. So the amount of homes per hectare that are burned. So then we can pull all this together and start to try and tease out what a social ecological fire regime might be. So here, what we, what we can do is try to group these states into basic fire regimes based on frequency and severity. And so in this quadrant, we can see in the top left, low frequency, high severity, high frequency, high severity in the top right, um, and then low frequency, low severity, and high frequency, low severity. So we can start to group states into these different areas based on the data that we've compiled here. And this gives us more information about how fire is impacting communities across the West. So we can see that Colorado sits over here in the top left corner uh, with low frequency, but high severity. And again, when we're saying severity here, we're talking about structure loss rate. Now, when we look at it across time, we can see that these values have moved, right? So we've seen changes in, in states um, and across the West. One of the, one of the most, one of the interesting things to note here is Oregon, having started in the first decade down here in the high burn rate, low loss rate, and jumping up into the high burn rate, high loss rate. So we can start to see how these dynamics are changing for communities across these states. This, this concept of a social ecological fire regime can provide context for policy and management responses to fire and help us to better understand how we might manage. So some of the key patterns here in wrapping up is um, wildfires are clearly becoming more destructive over the 21st century. Um, but not just because of more fire. Structure loss rate is well linked to human patterns, which have increased over the last two decades. And then human drivers and impacts of fire vary distinctly across the West. So we saw that with how different states have changed over these two decades. Interestingly, lightning ignited fire still accounts for the majority of area burned, um, but they are distinctly different from human caused fires in that they don't destroy as many structures or have as much of a social impact. So I'm gonna skip over this one and, and I'll go ahead and end there. Um, and I'm happy to discuss this more uh, through conversations and discussion groups.